Fuck, I've been on quite heavy and fast tonight. What happens when I fucking do coffee right before the damn <laughs> show? <laughs> 50 cups of coffee and you know it's on. I like short libraries myself. Get in, get out, you know? Yeah. So I'm really worried that this Overwatch League thing is really going to kill, not just, it's not going to fail on its own, but it's really going to hurt competitive Overwatch because... Do you get a second crack at building the momentum? Like, say they... Eight, two years from now. Let up on it, right? Yeah. Hey, guys, do your things and all that. Does anyone give a shit anymore? Like, the, the people who could have been pro Overwatch, right? Yeah. Not not the ones who were in the league. Not the very select few who got league shots, right? But the broad numbers who would have gone to... Um, I don't know what the fuck the, the FPS of... E the Evo of FPSs would be. But go to that, right? Right. Um, will they care anymore? Like, they're gonna move on at some point. Some some other game. I mean, Player Unknown Battlegrounds is really shaping up to... Maybe DreamHack? Yeah, Sorry. maybe DreamHack, yeah. It's, it's, that's the thing, it's like, DreamHack gonna give a shit? Is, is DreamHack gonna say, ah, there's not really enough, you know, um, interest to, to host this shit? Or if they do, it's not like a, a streamed, you know, game. <clears throat> and part of my fear too is that I see them repeating what I see a lot in technology, a big problem in technology, and that is there's a fascination with the algorithm. The algorithm, we get the algorithm right, and it's going to rank everybody perfectly. The algorithm we get the has a place algorithm, for you, Mike. Yeah, we get the algorithm right, and there'll be no fake news on Facebook. The algorithm right, and the YouTube comments will clean up. And it's like, no. Algorithms cannot do these things. What do you need? I need your help. Young master, I cannot aid one who opposes the master. You won't go unrewarded. Were they told to, like, read it at the speed in which it was displayed on screen? I, I don't know. I'm interested in this. <laughs> Thank you! I'm interested in this. Fuck, I've been on quite heavy and fast tonight. What happens when I fucking do coffee right before the damn <laughs> show? <laughs> 50 cups of coffee and you know it's on. <clears throat> I'm listening to, um... Farewell for now. Mogul. Which is the, the, uh, podcast. Um, I don't know if you ever listened to Serial. I did not. I never got on the Serial bandwagon. I um, I did. Um, I, I like the kind of... I mean, that just hits my alley of, of legal inside, dirty, hands-on type shit. Right. Um, and plus, I mean, the first episode of Serial had, like, a really interesting uh, story and case of this, this murder and everything that took place a decade ago. <clears throat> um, the, uh... Farewell for now. The, the procedural podcast format. Uh, Mogul is kind of done like that. Um, it's the story of uh, Chris Lighty, um, who is like a um, Russell Simmons of hip hop. Um, produced a lot of big acts, like uh, like my favorite uh, um, or managed managed. I don't know. I can't say produced. Managed like road managed set tours, date deals, that kind of thing. Um, uh, Tribe called Quest. Yeah. You know, left my wallet in El Segundo. 
Um, he was behind them. He's kind of a little bit later. He's like a decade later than uh, Russell Simmons doing like Run DMC and VC Boys and shit like that. Um, but the thing is, is like when he was in his 40s, um, not too long ago. Um, he was found dead in what was re what was ruled a suicide. And it's one of those like, no, this this dude did not suicide, you know? Right. There, there's almost no evidence to support that. It's just one of those like, well, we found him with a gun. That was the gun that killed him. We found no note. We ruled the suicide. Like, really? Uh huh. Um, but the podcast isn't necessarily just delving into this suspicious world suicide it's going back throughout his entire history and letting people know what his legacy was because like i said he was a manager um and producer and things like that he wasn't a dj he wasn't an artist so yeah. his contributions aren't going to be as transparent to the general public um and, and enjoying a lot of that. Enjoying a lot of... Um, hearing that stuff. Because I love that stuff. I love... Um, the history through music. Through the people who are there. Because very rarely does it have anything to do with... The events of the day. The politics of the time. Like there's an influence to that. But the actual stories, you have to hear from someone who was there. Like, um, you know, Grandmaster Flash, right? One of the first DJs to start mixing and cutting and scratching records, right? Built his own fucking turntables that he could scratch to crossfade between them. Because that shit didn't exist. That wasn't a thing, right? He starts out and he's cutting tons of these jazz songs um, over heavier beats. These songs become fucking standards to um, their samples. Like, I can play a number of jazz tunes, and you'll recognize them like, Oh, shit, that's Sugar Hill Gang. You know, that's uh, that's the bit from this, or that's been sampled to death, you know? And it's like, no, that's Bob James. Welcome to the Mardi Gras. You know, it's just white dude playing jazz. Um, and it's like, so how does these white dudes playing jazz become, like hip-hop anthem? Well, the answer is that when young Bronze Master Flash, right? Before he's right. Grandmaster Flash, before he's ranked up, um, his dad had an album collection, and his dad was into jazz. And he would sneak into the family parlor because his dad would break his fingers uh, if he was to ever touch any of his dad's stereo equipment. Um, or his record collection. Um, and then he's like, and then my dad would definitely kill me if he ever knew I was taking his turntable and playing the records backwards and scratching between them. Yeah. But he's listening to this. He's listening to his dad's jazz. He knows there's parts of the song he likes. And he's thinking, when I go out on the street party, I want to take these good parts of these songs and play these good parts for everyone. And it's like the birth of like the DJ and cutting between songs and crossfading, you know? Yeah. Um And it's like that's that's why the jazz is there, because he's there on the forefront, and people are hearing him. What the fuck is he doing? What are these things? Also, what are these beats he's playing? Did you hear he played that, you know? Play that. Play that under me. I wanna um Rap artists started as a side thing to the DJ, right? That's why they were called MCs, right? Master of yeah. Ceremony, right? They were sort of like on stage to like hype the DJ. Everybody get ready, the DJ's coming here, right? And that started to become a game of entertainmentship that leads to like the rap artist. <clears throat> but then they wanted like the different beats cut under their songs and like you hear what he was cutting, cut that underneath me, you know? I want to do something on top of that. So, like, if Grandmaster Flash's dad had been in the country, there'd still be hip-hop, 
But there'd be country all over that fucker. Yeah. Because it wasn't about, like, the origins of jazz and the origins and economics in the time. It was his dad listened to jazz. That's the answer, you know? Um, and so it's really awesome hearing uh, these stories, especially from a guy um, listening to um, that did um, the, the jazz era hip-hop. So this is, like, early 90s, late 80s. Well, you have your Tribe Called Quest, much later Us Three, uh, Jungle Brothers, uh, did that. Um, him getting involved in there and shaping their sound and, and how their sound came about and things like that. Uh, it's a really cool podcast. It's called Mogul. Um, they're like 30 minute episodes and they're really well, like, NPR level production for the 30 minutes. Um, great story. And then they have some side stories, like, so during the ads, they'll actually start having a conversation about another thing of hip-hop. And I love it, because they got talking on early Fresh Prince. Yeah. Uh, when it was DJ Dazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. Yeah. And, and all of that. And I knew of this. I didn't know that it was accepted that Jazzy Jeff invented it. But there's a cut called The Transformer. Um, and it's, it's literally scratching the record to sound like a transformer. Yeah. Okay, so if you scratch the record in such a way, you can make it sound like Optimus Prime transforming. Okay? That's a thing in hip-hop to do every now and then. That's a cut. That's a move that a DJ can do, right? Really good between songs and shit, because it's a transformer, right? Yeah. DJ Jazzy Jeff pioneered that. And then, of course, they fade out of the ad text, and they go back, and I'm like, No, don't stop! Fucking DJ Jazzy Jeff, like a fan of Transformers? Is he, like, growing up on Optimus Prime and shit in the 80s, and that's, like, influencing Will Smith hip-hop? You know? I have to know these things now. Right. I haven't started it yet, but I have another new podcast to listen to as well. Um, I'll just give you the title. Tell you everything you need to know about it. Okay. It's called... Lamar Burton reads. Oh, okay. <laughs> and it's exactly that. It's Lamar Burton. It's not kids' books. It's not reading Rainbow. But it's still him doing his thing, taking He's just reading shit. F- fantasy, sci fi short stories. Basically, something he can fit into a 30, 40 minutes. Yeah. I'm giving you the Lamar Burton. So, I, like, I got that on my list. I'm going to be listening to those because that sounds great. And I asked, uh, I asked the person who was telling me about it, I'm like, I know you said it's not reading Rainbow, but... Is there reading Rainbow bits? Like, is he, like... Are you gonna say, but don't take my word for it? <laughs> if not that, something that just, like, I know you're doing there, you know what I mean? Yeah. He was like, yeah, yeah, there, there is. I'm like, okay, I'm all about that. I'm surprised he's just doing that as a podcast. I was thinking, like, shit, if he wanted to do that, I'm surprised somebody's not paying him to... Or at least out an audible or something. <clears throat> what was it was it reading Rainbow? It's been a long time. That he did a Kickstarter or something for? Yeah. It's you, Master Alucard. I, knew, I remember him being involved in like restarting something. I'm interested in. <laughs> like you. I'm interested. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. May I have another? Thank you, sir. May I have another? There's not going to reset up on my podcast and shit because I got this new. It went to the seven, John. Okay. Had, had long, deep thoughts. About a 3.5 millimeter phone jack. I, uh, headphone jack. Because the iPhone 7 doesn't have one of those. Right. I am 90% Bluetooth everything I put my phone to. I was like, okay, I just need it in my truck and I can leave the one free adapter they give you free, as in it comes with the phone that you just paid way too fucking much money for. 
This was the result of uh, the wife losing her phone. Two weeks ago, I think. Maybe, maybe a little longer. Bit, maybe a little bit longer than that. Um, it was lost right when I came back from uh, California. <clears throat> and didn't really mention that it was lost before the battery died. So iPhone does have like a find my phone feature. Um, that can like geolocate your phone. Yeah. But if the battery's dead, then this is the kind of shit that you really put in the setup screen. You have to go in and opt into a setting that says, if my battery is low, transmit my last location to the iCloud. So if it dies, I still have the last known position right before the battery died, right? Yeah. But because of privacy issues, that's an opt-in to, right? And that makes sense. I'm all fine. I'm all about, hey, opt into this, you know, bit of privacy bit. What pissed me off is it's not in the setup screen, you know, of like, hey, did you know if you lose your phone, you can turn this on that even if it's dead, here's the pros and cons, right? The screen's pretty good about the pros and cons on it, you know? Um, but it's too late when the fucking phone's dead. So, win a week to see if it turned up. Win another week of like, <sighs> kind of to see if it turns up, but more of like, I don't want to fucking buy a phone. Yeah. I, I really, like, we had iPhone 5S's, right? They, these were pretty old phones. Um, they're paid for. Um, we switched to T-Mobile right when T-Mobile started the pay your phone off and the price comes down shit. Everybody does this now. Uh, but T-Mobile was like the first with it. And plus T-Mobile, uh, kept unlimited with tethering, which was important to me. Um, and when Verizon was like, no, 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 we, we won't let you tether on an un unlimited plan. So that's why I got off of Verizon. Um, and went to T-Mobile. Um... So, the thing is, is like, alright, it's becoming clear we have to buy a fucking phone. And... Mike's kind of logic is, I, I really hate... I hate spending money I don't want to spend. But I really hate spending some money... Yeah. Knowing it's not the real solution. That's... That's great. We're just gonna chill. We're gonna chill. Yeah. Is something gonna happen? No. He's not gonna pull the quin out, the quill out, and then they're starting like, no. dear diary. Help. Today in the castle, I saw human bones that moved on their own.